Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Greetings. And all of the salutations. Tony, why aren't you in the kitchen? Right? Why aren't you in the kitchen? Well, I have something different this evening. Is that we, we are, are in the kitchen. kitchen. What do you think of that? Huh? Why don't we head over there now? All right. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I'm so glad that you are here. You guys ready to make some bolognese? Or what? All right, so here we go. We're set. We're ready to go. We're going to make some... Uh, some official bolognese this evening. Give me a five by five if you can hear me absolutely perfectly. Excellent. Are you guys ready to learn how to make this amazing, classic dish? Put a one in the chat if you are ready and you are taking notes. And hopefully you guys are making some of this stuff at home, you know? Don't be shy to take some pictures. Let me know. We've got some simple ingredients that we're working with here. Once again, this is technique. All technique. So hold on one second. Let me just get the monitor up and running. Come on. Huh. Everybody go fuck yourself. Come on, get this going. All right. There we go. So basically, what we're doing here with this bolognese, let me get you going and get you started, all right? We've got our pan here, we've got our pasta water that's boiling over on this side so we're gonna get that going again that was just boiling a second ago I'm gonna trap the heat in there now we have a few ingredients here there's not that many all right we got pancetta it's a pancetta you could use regular bacon if you really you know can't find pancetta use a regular bacon if you're in england use whatever streaky bacon pig you got uh right here we got some you know, there's some organic beef, some pork. We got the beef and the pork. We have some delicious English peas. And I have chopped up celery, onion, and carrot to look a little bit like the Italian flag over there. Let me turn it there. Wait, it would be this way. Yeah, there you go. All right. I think it'd be like that over there. So we've got the San Marzano tomatoes that I've de-seeded, 28 ounces. It's really important for you to use good tomatoes in this. I mean, good ingredients are gonna work all the time. Tomato paste. I have some goat milk right here. This is actually goat milk. I have some butter. Uh, I always have a little white, uh, nice, uh, good white wine around for cooking. This is a nice Pinot Grigio. I'll be able to use that also for a clam sauce that I'm gonna show you guys later. Um, 
organic extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of beef broth, organic beef broth. So let's hit this and uh, get this heat cranking on this bird. And really the first thing you want to start doing when you get a bolognese going is you want to build the flavors up, right? You want to build the flavors up. And we got that tag up there for the uh, Cash App, Super Chat, Super Stickers, Super Thanks. Gifted memberships, uh, you know, the best way to go is through that Cash App, Venmo at Zero Dark Tony. The fun stuff. We're going to have some more food-related merch coming up. And anybody who wants to put in any, uh, you know, designs, feel free. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice white clam sauce. I don't really, I'm not a red clam sauce guy. I like the white clam sauce. And people say, eh, don't put cheese on it. You put cheese on whatever you want. Don't you let anybody tell you otherwise. Oh, we also got a bay leaf right here, okay? So the bay leaf's gonna be very important. And remember, you're gonna build these flavors up, all right? So the first thing we wanna do is uh can you guys see the pan all right oh shit you know what i gotta turn on the light i'm so sorry guys hello illuminous illuminous mints and the zagadis all right let's move it back a little bit all right oh hey you know you gotta have the prep work you gotta have the prep work clean you know what i mean so a little olive oil here let's just throw that in and thank you so much for being a member for five months. And i in Red Nazi. I'm your biggest fan. I'll follow you until you love me. Okay, so we're gonna take a little butter too. All right, and remember, we're just building the flavors. We put the butter in there and the olive oil together. They're not gonna burn. And let's throw in that pancetta. All right, we gotta. Get some of that goodness out of that pancetta. Let me give that just a little stir. You just want that to cook in there for a little bit because we're gonna add those aromatics over there. That's right, baby. There we go. You gotta keep it clean. So just letting that get a nice little sizzle in there. All right, get that going. You want it to be a little bit, you don't want anything in this dish to be crispy, okay? We don't want anything to be crispy. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna take these aromatics right here. Look at that, you got your onion, your carrot, and your celery. Everybody in the pool, okay? So we're gonna get two things out of here. Okay? So get these aromatics going with the pancetta. And this is that process of building this dish. Right? You gotta build it one step at a time. So you've got your onion. You've got your celery. You've got your carrot and your pancetta. There's no garlic in this, by the way, guys. If you want to put garlic in it, put garlic in it. The, the traditional recipe is no garlic. Does that surprise you? Tony's box. There you go. We'll get uh, we'll get our buddy Royce in on that. Had fun on the Sunday gravy earlier. 
Now, this is a classic, and you just want to get these cooked together a little bit. You don't need to overdo these, right? You just let these cruise for a little while at a nice cruising altitude, right? And I'm using ceramic titanium pans, so I'm using a, you know, like a compound style um, material for the utensil. Probably some kind of nylon compound. All right, so we just, actually, I don't even need to do that. You can just take these and just start to toss them dishes around like that. And if you want to, just a little bit, all right, with these vegetables, you can add just a little splash of that wine in there. To start to get those notes going, because it's going to cook off the alcohol. I mean, you guys know I don't drink, so, you know. A nice mirepoix. Yes, exactly. Exactly. A mirepoix. Right? So now, the next thing that we are going to add is the meats. Right? We're going to add the meats. And then again, we're going to start building up the flavor. And we got to season everything in steps as we go. So we haven't seasoned these as of yet. So now we're just going to hit them with a little bit of salt. And now we're going to take some of that beef, right? We're going to take that beef right here. And we're going to drop that right into the pan. That's not blood. That's a little bit of water. And... Some globulins in there. It's a protein. A lot of people go, oh, it's blood in your steak. It's not blood. Look it up. I promise. I don't put blood in my food. It's not blood. All right. So now we take the pork. All right. And this is a lovely Kurabuda pork. I got these at the butcher. Special for this. I was gonna add a little, you know, veal, but people get upset. People get really upset by the veal. Now start to mix in the vegetables with the meat. You don't want to brown this and crisp it, okay? This is not a brown and crisp thing. This is a slow cook, keep it, you know, at a certain texture, you don't want this to be crispy. See, I'm just chopping it up just to get that texture in there. And once again, we're going to take a little bit. We're going to put this right here for one second. Give it a little seasoning. You know, just hit it with a little bit of salt. Oops. Just a little, because we're going to build up salt later. And we're going to take a little of that wine again. Ooh. Blast that in there. Again, so you just want to flip it. You want to turn it. You want to incorporate everything. Now, usually you would do this in like a much bigger pot. But you could do it in something like this. I mean, you know, if you're doing it for like a bunch of people. A bunch of people are going to get gifted some bolognese. That, that I know. Look at that. You just incorporate it. Keep cooking. You got to be patient. Right? Italian food takes a little patience, a little technique. We can turn the heat up on that a little bit, though. Right? And let's start to build some of that flavor a little more with a little bit of that, just a little beef stock in there just to splash and get that going. Because this is really the core of the entire dish is how you build this nice and slow nice and slow
So hey everybody, how you doing? Good to see you, tease time, Christina, Francesca, Ivor. You guess what I got for Ivor? I wasn't lying. I got Ivor the gluten-free tagliatelle. You are not gonna know the difference between this and regular pasta, I promise. Like a greetings. Dog it, Sam. Of course. So you see that? It's just sort of like simmering away. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Yes, gluten free. Don't try to do it. Okay, and all these, all this pork and beef fat that's in here, you don't drain this off. What are you, out of your mind? What are you, crazy? Look at that, all right? Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you just cook this down. Cook it down, down, you cook it down. Make sure you do what you gotta do to cook it down. And you know, you don't want it to be browned or overcooked because this is going to cook also with the sauce. The milk goes in at the very end and you don't need to use goat milk. I mean, it's a, that's some super Italian shit right there. That's some big ass shit. <laughs> this is the, is the goat milk. My mother had a goat at her place as a child in Italy. I don't know what the ghost's name was. Oops, I hit the phone. Gotta be careful. Well, it's just good to know that some of these products are out there, you know what I mean? And you want people to know that, hey, you could do this with a gluten-free pasta. It doesn't matter, it's, you know? There's no gluten in here yet. So I hope everybody on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Kick, Instagram. I hope everybody's having a great time. I'll check in with you on Instagram over there. In just a second. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw some of these uh, things in here. We're gonna get it simmering. And then I'm gonna head back in the studio. And we're gonna see if we can make this cool, sweet, transition, if you know what I mean. So make sure you share this out with a friend. Everybody wants to know how to make the bolognese, okay? And this is how you do it. It's slow, it's methodical. It's technique, right? And you just wanna make sure it's all loosey-goosey in there so that you can get the texture that you want. Salute, Kelsey. Now, whoever, uh, who's ever had bolognese before? Okay. Let me know in the chat. Put a one in the chat if you've had it. Put a two in the chat if you have not. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start incorporating these other ingredients, all right? We're gonna take those San Marzano tomatoes. I've already taken all the seeds out of there. All right. We're gonna blow that out in there a little bit. Then we're gonna take some of our beef broth. We just pour it in with the San Marzano tomatoes. You wanna get all the flavors. You wanna get all the flavors, all right? Get that in there, get that going. Have a nice day, right? Then we're gonna take some of that tomato paste right there. And you just wanna take a nice, you know, a nice couple fatty little dollops of that there and throw that on in, 
right? Get yourself a little bit of that. And then, uh, let's stir this a little bit. Uh -huh. let's, go. So let's get this stirred up. Okay. Because we gotta get this going. Then we're gonna cover it. And we're gonna add another nice big splash of wine. There you go, there's that bolognese, that color right there. Okay, so here that comes. Let's stir that away. Get all that incorporated in there. All those flavors, okay? Oh my God. Oh my God, the pancetta. The olive oil, the butter, right? The carrots, the onion. <laughs> the celery all of those flavors combining right here whoa whoa we don't add the milk until the very end okay so that goat milk can come up here and that can relax we are going to add another splash of wine just like that Okay, just a little splash of that, and there you go. So right here, what we do is we just let this, you know, we're gonna add a little more tomato paste, some of that organic tomato paste. Oh yeah, those are the San Marzano tomatoes. I mean, that's the good. If you want to use tomatoes, that is, that's the best way to go is San Marzano. Okay. And get that nice concentrate in there. Some people use chicken broth, some people use red wine. I like to use beef broth and a white wine. The white wine adds a little lightness to it. The beef broth adds depth, right? So you have a little bit of those contrasting elements getting to your palate, which is the way it's supposed to be, right? I mean, you don't want everything to be so heavy with this one. Oh my God, look at that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. And we're gonna... Throw that bay leaf in there. All right, go go make go make some friends in there, Mr. Bay Leaf. All right, go make some friends under there. Have a swim. Take a dip. Everybody in the pool. So here we go. Now what we do is we're gonna drop our heat way down. Okay, we want to drop it way down. All right, like rock lobster down, 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 down. And I mean, you can see that is starting to be a champ sauce right there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover that up, right? We're gonna cover that up. We're gonna let that ride. All right? We're gonna let that ride. And now again, I'm gonna use, look, it's a, it's a, it's a, Again, I'm gonna use this Romano because I like it. Oh yeah, it's looking good. I mean, come on, look at that. Look at that. That is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. That is what you will find in the, you know, the Michelin star Italian vibe right there. Look at that. Now. It's got to simmer for a little while. The texture's got to change. Those flavors got to, you know, get to know each other. That bay leaf has got to get in there and do its thing. It's going to add sort of like this nuttiness to the whole thing. You guys cook with bay leaves? Anybody cook with bay leaves? Put a one in the chat if you cook with bay leaves. Because if you don't, you are missing out on something else, my friend. 
And we put those peas in at the very end. Well, not at the very end. The milk is at the very end. You know, the peas are, you know. Jigga peas. I hope everybody's having a good time learning something, right? Now, look at this. These are simple ingredients, right? I told you. And if you don't want to use the wine, you don't have to. You could just use the stock, right? You could just use the broth, right? Whether it's chicken, whether it's um, beef, vegetable even. You know, if you want to do this with mushrooms, you could make this a whole mushroom recipe. It doesn't have to be with meat. I would chop the mushrooms super fine, but you know, it's kind of tedious, but I've done it before, it's delicious. So I've made a mushroom bolognese. You could also make this with other meats. You could make this with game. You could make this with elk, moose. I've had it with all of those things. Delicious. Yeah, in Canada, I had moose pepperoni too. So I'm gonna get in here with the chat with you guys. While this is simmering. You don't cook. Well, you know, that's because uh, the Dutch people don't have mac and cheese. So I don't think you have to worry about it. It's horrendous. It's a horrendous statement. Fucking horrible. Do you guys know that they don't have uh, mac and cheese in the Netherlands? Uh, this needs to be reported to The Hague. Hmm. Oh, quite honestly, I didn't want to have this out, but you know. Let's move that on the set. Move that on the set, okay? We're moving that and we're striking. This strike, strike it from the set. Thank you. Just strike it. Ah, but we gotta put something there, it's so ugly. Jesus. Ah, can we get something here? Something, all right. You know, bottles and cans, clap your hands. I don't like plugs. Stop it, nutrition facts, Ugh, as if. Yeah, explain that. Explain that to this international crowd. Go ahead, tell the world. Tell them. Look at this. Oh my God, that looks so good. Oh, you guys, if you could smell this right now. Oh, I mean, just the wine and the pork and the beef and the tomato, those different levels of tomato in there, right? That paste, so that's that concentrate, that depth. Then it hits it with that high note of that freshy, fresh, fresh, right? As if. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. I mean, this is like, if you make this, if you make this for kids, first of all, let's start with kids. Kids go nuts over this, okay? And look, don't worry about the white wine, the alcohol, it cooks off, it just leaves a flavor. There's no, you know, the heat cooks off the alcohol. I wouldn't consume alcohol. Oh my God, the smell is just filling the entire place. I wish you guys were here. I wish you guys were all here. We would have a big dinner party. So let's take another look here. Every couple minutes, you gotta take a look. This is a, a labor of love. You gotta keep stirring it. You gotta keep it moving. This is not something that can sit in one, you know, you don't want anything to burn. You want everything to be nice and loose. Look at that, look at that texture. There's that traditional, a la rustica, bolon, 
That's right, Sunday dinner here. We are going to sit down. We are going to eat. We are going to taste. Uh, and tonight, I think my drink of choice is going to be um, a Pellegrino, a sparkling juice. One of the Pellegrino. I don't know. It might be a uh, blood orange. I might go with a limonata or the grapefruit. I don't know. We'll pick. We'll pick. Have you guys ever had these? Let me show you. All right. I don't know. Some parts of the world might have them. Some parts, maybe not. But there you go. There's the San Pellegrino. This is the, uh, you know, Pompelmo. The grapefruit one. But there's also blood orange. I think I might go with the blood orange. That's kind of, that's kind of feeling like the vibe. Look at how clean my nails are, my hands. I'm gonna cl- see the, you see some fucking people do cookie shows and their hands are disgusting. <laughs> Just want you to re- better recognize. And thanks to everybody who's been donating to the Cash App and the Venmo. Um, you got to let me know if you want to have me give you a shout out. Let me know in the message. Oh, the Pellegrino Blood Orange. Yeah, well, that's that's what we're going with. In a tall glass. Excuse me. If you hear me drink and have some water. Oh, thank you. We're going to be doing some things from some different angles in the kitchen. It's a lot bigger than just this space, so we have uh, quite a bit of room here. Even at my brokest, I live very well. (laughs) Believe that. (coughs) But fortunately, things are turning around. Things are looking up. Some things came through that needed to, and you know, it's all the right timing. God's time. I don't ever panic in the situation. You shouldn't. I have the global knives. The pans are uh, the pans that I use that aren't the frock right here. Uh, they're all ceramic titanium, but I have the scan pan from Denmark. That's what I'm using right now. I'm looking at some other ones, but I'm always getting pans. Oh yeah, then there's Cobra's Kitchen. (laughs) Yeah, I mean. Well, thank you very much, Layla. I don't know quite how to take that. Oh, and this in the back here is the Vitamix. So we're gonna do a lot of stuff with the Vitamix too. And we're gonna do stuff, uh, brunch. I'm gonna teach you how to make poached eggs. Make eggs Benedict. I'm gonna teach you how to make all of the mother sauces in the French and Italian kitchens. Everything from Bernays to, to Becchiamella, you know, the bechamel sauce, because we're going to make lasagna and pizza. Oh, excellent. Good, good. We have some poached egg lovers in there. Put a one in the chat if you love them poached eggs.
And, uh, you know, we have this uh, software that's coming out that I have the opportunity to put some voices into a super chat system and we can make custom voices. So I think I want one of them to be, to be uh, Jason Statham, right? So Jason Statham is going to be one of them. Put some voices that you like in the chat that you would actually on super chats, you would pay for this voice to be heard. You know, you would like it. If you had a super chat going and you were paying, what voice would you like to hear? You know what I mean? Michael Jackson, Sean Connery, like there's just a ton of them. Anything that you think of, put in the chat, but also put it in the comment section. I put it up on the community thing earlier. I wanna hear what you guys think. Yeah, some creators also don't know what, you know, not really what they're doing. They know not what they do. Oh my goodness. Time to stir again to check in on the, oh boy, look at that. Mm-mm. Bolognese. Maron. Everybody make it a friends. Mm. Oof. Ah. Gilbert Gottfried? Okay, that's a good one. Gilbert Gottfried is an excellent choice. Chris Shelton. Well, it needs to have a little more international appeal. Chris Shelton isn't, uh, he ain't big enough for my, you know, for my needs. Go big. I'd say go big or go home, but most of you are probably home right now anyway. Oh my God, this sauce smells so good, you guys. My goodness. And do you notice how I keep everything super clean and organized? You guys like the idea of Gilbert Gottfried? Okay. Trump. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Uh, you know, excuse me. I just want to jump in on the call. Uh, I want to say hello to everybody here uh, for coming into the Zero Dark Tony channel. Uh, I really want to thank everyone. We have the best bolognese. You're going to love the bolognese. You're going to love the sauce. Everything about the sauce. They gave me the virus. And then they gave me the sauce. And when I got the sauce, it was delicious. Tasted so good. All you gotta do is just get in there and grab him by the pussy. I've always gotten the greatest pussy, the best pussy. Top shelf. <laughs> Top drawer. We just got demonetized. Vin Diesel. What the fuck for? Vin Diesel. I mean, that was that was the Jason Statham. That 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 covers that. That Jason Statham covers Vin Diesel. Don't you think so? Let me tell you something. If you're gonna grab a pussy, make sure it's the best one. Look at that sauce. Oh my god. I'm sitting here in front of my TV. So, I got like a hundred inch television in front of me with the monitor of the sauce cooking. It's awesome. Vin Diesel, yeah, a good voice, but nobody would recognize it, you know? You know, whereas with Jason Stivum. And here's the thing, with this new software, they only keep 10%, whereas YouTube keeps 30% or more on Super Chats and so, so you know. We love the Super Chats. We love gifted memberships, especially. Morgan Freeman. Oh, that's excellent. Morgan Freeman. 
My only impression of Morgan Freeman is Morgan Freeman saying Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Time out the stream elements. Sam. <coughs> or Ivor. Oh, B.A. Barakas. I pity the fool. What you mean you put me on a plane, Hannibal? Oh my goodness, the, the, the smell is just unbelievable, okay? It's unreal. Crack a little more salt in there. Ay, ay, ay. Where's the, okay. I'm gonna put a little more of the beef broth in there just to get a little more of that beefy flavor in there, a little more of that texture. Coming up, it's really just gonna soak in, you know, to everything. This is strangely similar to a risotto because the meat is actually soaking in these flavors now, right? And you're getting that nice texture, that thick, that thicky thick. You know, you know what I mean. You know that thicky thick. Oh. I, I, papi, mi way. I, I. Ay, 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 hue, papi. Ay, hue, papi. Si, sí. chingón, papi. Paparo. I want my cheesy pips. Oh, Cartman? You guys want Cartman? <laughs> Oh, didn't he punch someone or something? <laughs> is Sean Strickland... Sean Strickland is the one with the colored head. No, he's the one with the shaved head. Oh, he's the one that fought Sneeko. Okay. Interesting. So now it's almost about time to throw them peas in there. What do you say we throw them peas in there, huh? Oh, the one that fought Seiko? What's up, horse guy? Okay, so let's just throw enough of them peas in there. You don't have to throw them all in there. Bitch peas. Huh? 
And the next goes in. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's about time to do a little tasting. Get a little tasting spoon. Let's see what's going on here. Let's check this dish. So I'm going to add a little of this um, Parmesan, this, just throw a little of this in here because I'm about to add the milk. Uh -huh. So you add just a little splash of this dairy and just see how this incorporates here to see how much we need depending on how the color, oh yeah. Daddy, where's the sauce? Who's got the sauce for me, Daddy? Oh my. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to switch up some things around here. Right, have this here. We're gonna bring the pasta up to the front and we are going to put the sauce in the rear to simmer, okay? Mm -hmm. We got liquor in the front, poker in the rear. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all week. Try the veal. Tip your waitresses. If you want to watch the sauce. Ow! I just touched the outside of the pot. What is wrong with me? Uh, it's mental. There we go. That's where we are. And then we stir in the sauce in the mixed stir in the sauce in the Take a big chunk of bread and dip it in that manavaka haste in the lifting when then bring it to your hood, gotta bring it up there, it tastes like Yeah, I pour wine in it. I pour some white wine. There's a Pinot Grigio right there in the back of the frame. Cooks off the alcohol, though. I don't drink, but it does lend a nice flavor to it. You know, part of the flavor profile. But the alcohol cooks off. And that has enough wine. I just gave it a taste. It's perfect. And if you don't want to use wine, you could just use chicken broth, beef broth. You don't have to use wine at all. It just, like I said, just adds another little weird, you know, just dimension on that palate. The palate. The mystery of all things that are mysterious in the world and, and world of mystery. <laughs> Gifted memberships. We got that Cash App uh, QR code up there. And you know, it goes right back into the show, guys. We make sure that, uh, you know, it takes care of all the supplies we got here. So you guys have uh, supported the stream. And now we get to make a nice bowl of yes. So thank you. Yeah, you know, usually my lives are a little different style, but I, I like to mix it up. 
I have uh, different skills and abilities. Skill abilities. And I'm actually much more relaxed when I'm cooking. I'm sure you, my audience will agree <laughs> that I'm much more chill when I'm cooking. I think the calmest people hear me is when I'm cooking because I enjoy it. Skill bill. All right, so now we're going to um, take this pasta and we are going to drop it in the salted water, salted like the ocean, All right? And these are these little bird nests of this gluten-free pot and I'm telling you I've had this before you're not gonna know the difference that it's gluten-free or not not with this one there's certain ones that you'll know you'll be able to tell the texture's weird you know it's like your mom you know nobody wants that nobody wants that your mom texture okay? And I mean like your mom made it by hand. So. We're gonna let that rock and roll. Like a git, like a like a drunk boy. But I don't I don't drink that. A lot of people think that I'm drunk, but I'm not. These are the noodles here. The old pasta. I will, uh, I will be doing some fresh pasta classes, you know? We'll make them seminars, you know? Some fresh pasta seminars. I'll show you guys how to make pizza dough. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to make omelets too. I'm gonna show you how to make a proper omelet. A lot of people haven't even had a proper omelet. Goat milk to this bolognese. Oh my goodness. Look at that, guys. Just look at that. Okay. Oh, man. Damn. 
There's a right in it. And what we're essentially going to do is we're going to put it together in a uh, 10 inch pan. And I think I'm going to go on with a one wide bowl. A white wide bowl to plate. And I was expecting this tool today. I didn't get it in time. It just, it, it literally, I just got the alert. It just got to me. But we'll use it next time. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing that you'll like. It's okay to make a mess as long as you clean it up. We must clean up our messes in life as human beings, no? <laughs> Ooh, look at that. A delicious tagliatella. Look at how I placed that. It looked like I was like, that's more like an endorsement placement right there, right? Let me look at that. Oops. And for, brought to you by the people of Scanpan, not a sponsor, as um, as our buddy would say. So we also want to harvest some of the pasta water out of this as well, because some of those starches in that pasta water. Even though it is gluten-free, there's still some components in there that are non-glutinous, but do help the sauces. So any, any pasta water is good for the finish. And I'm gonna finish up on a plate, put it in your face, and it's gonna be delicious. Don't be jelly. I know, I know. I know, you'd love to be here enjoying this with me. I got it. It's okay. We got a timer here going for the pasta. Oh boy. It's okay to make a mess. We just clean up. Gotta keep your eye on things. I mean, you would not know the difference between this and a, a gluten pasta. This is delicious. This is actually one of the better ones that I've had. Strangle that, choke that motherfucker. That's not going to make it into the final dish, obviously. Thank you. 
Hey, a tracks the Super Horse, thank you so much. Your cooking videos are so calming to me. Thank you. Well, we appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Thank you for the four ninety nine super chats. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our tax. Thank you so much. Oof. Almost there. I mean, we are almost ready to eat. Sorry. I know, Slurpee. It's fun. Obviously, we've spilled some stuff down in there. But we, again, make sure you clean up your mess. If the kids are helping you in the kitchen, you know, like they said in On Golden Pond, what good's a, a dwarf if he doesn't do any chores? Henry Fonda, thank you very much. All right, so. We got that bolognese ready. We're gonna fire up that front burner. We got the pasta ready. And let's get our 10 inch pan popping. Because we're ready to go, guys. This is platey plate time. And just to, uh, you know, put a little butter in there. We throw some of this pasta water. that get nice. Let me stir up some of the sauce on this side. And as you can see, that sauce is just looking fire. Right? Look at that. That bolognese. That, that beef. Give me that beef. Give me that ding ding. We're getting bing bing bing. Whatever the hell that song is. And those peas in there add a nice little contrast, especially with the texture with the sweetness, right? As well. So, move those to the side. Once that starts to get going in there, when we see the heat is, oh boy, why don't I turn this shit on then? How about that? Yeah, there, there it is. When the heat starts to really get that going, all right, we are going to add pasta sauce, right? And start to build the actual final dish. Cheese and all. And obviously my favorite touch, I gotta have some Italian parsley. onion right there. Little piece of onion was in the butter. <laughs> That's all right. So now we just take a scoop of that sauce, okay? You've got that pasta water. You've got a little bit of that butter, all right? That's going to be like a binding right there. That butter is going to help bind this sauce. There's the timer. It's going to help bind this sauce, right? Perfect timing. Now we get that cooking in there. Right? 
Well, the peas are, uh, you don't have to do the peas, but they are, you know, they are delicious. I have a peas. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so now what we do is we're gonna take our portion of pasta, right? And put this in here. Right? Everybody comes to the party. Right? Right? Everybody comes to the party here. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. This is the errant. All right. What do you think of that, guys? Put a one in the chat. Put some hearts. Put some, you know, no onions in these pockets. No onions. Oh, my. Look at that. Okay. So now what we do is we pull everything up here, and we're ready to plate. All right? Let's get this so you can see me play what's going on here. All right, now again, there's a little tool that I did not have and forgot, but I'm going to show you again how to make yourself a nice presentation here with the pasta. You can just take a big spoon, any kind of spoon, right, just like this, and we're going to just make a nest, right? We're going to make a nest of pasta, right? Just make a nice little nest. Spin it around, and then boom, we put that right in the center. Look at that. Now we've got it already blended in with some of the sauce, but what we're gonna do is baby cakes. What the hell do you think we're here for? We're not here to play around. We're gonna sauce it up. Oh, just let it, just let it just fall over that pasta, All right? Then you're gonna take that Pecorino Romano. Okay. And you're going to take this and you're just going to, you're going to bless, bless this all over. All right. Bless this all over. This is just delicious. Amazing. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that. Okay. So that's what we got. Hello. Hello. Mm. Wow. Let's parsley this up. Just take a couple little pieces of that. And then we just bless that. Just, you know, just let it fall naturally. All right. This is what rustic cooking is. You just boom. Right. Oh, that's okay. Take that one out. <laughs> All right, see that? See that? Smile for the camera, baby. Right? Mm. Smile for the camera. Oh, look at this. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Let me tell you something. So now, hey everybody, we're going to take this over to the table, alright, alright, alright,
Oh, there we go. How's that? Sorry, I'm an idiot. See, I like to give you a little bit of a, you know, oh shit, my drink. I like to give you a little bit of suspense. You know, nothing beats uh, some suspense in the show. So we're gonna pour out the drink, we're gonna taste the pasta. Oh my God, it looks and smells delicious. I can't believe it. How lucky I am to be here with y'all here today as I eat this delicious dish that we have made together. This is the, the fruit of our loins working together in perfect harmony as a perfect unit as you will see from this delicious pasta that we have made together. Let's try it. Oh my God. Shut up. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Oh, and this delicious right here Anunciata, the blood orange version of the juice, sparkling juice. Mmm. Wow. This delicious, I mean, just such a balanced, sophisticated, oh, there's that bay leaf, lucky. Oh, is that parsley instead? Well, then we're eating it. So, yeah, you probably don't want to eat the bay leaf. Mmm. So good. Right? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. You know, if you got a favorite wine, do that instead. But here you got the peas. You got the richness of the tomato. You have that depth from the tomato paste. The wine, that trinity of the onions and the celery and the carrot all coming together with that finish, that goat milk, the butter, the olive oil, it all works together, right? Mmm. And it's such a rich dish, not just in um, taste and flavor, but in tradition, right? And how long this has been around the world. Mm. Wow. And then the peas just add that nice little texture finish. Mm. Oh, I would recommend a wine, definitely. Um, a Pinot Grigio would be great, right? A Pinot Grigio would be lovely with this. Mm. Uh, Brunello, you know, like a Montepulciano. Something like that. Something with some depth, right? But you also want it to have a little bit of lift to cut through some of this richness. You don't want too much rich on rich on rich, you know? Mm. Wow. telling you this is like what 45 hours in a restaurant all right you know what I'm talking about mm. 
hit the like wherever you are. Share this with a friend. This is something that if you make this, just play back this video. The ingredients are simple. Pork, beef, some kind of bacon. Broth, you know, broth, meat, milk. Come on, you got this. So make it, take pictures of it, post them up, tag me. I would love to see some of you guys make this for your family. And this is one of those things that this doesn't need practice like the risotto as much. This is gonna, you're gonna nail this right out of the gate. Mm. This is a, this is a, you can't miss it. Or you can't miss. Right? Mmm. Mmm. Chef style, use the apron. Mm. So, there we go. Another day, another dish right here. Amazing. So delicious. So, no matter where you guys are joining me from, all around the world, thank you so much for being here and enjoying this amazing classic. And I'll tell you something, you make this for your kids, get the family involved, get everybody cooking, right? If you have a family, get everyone involved. If you have just you, get in there and make something delicious for yourself. That's self-care, right? So. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the show. You could always hit the uh, super thanks on the replay. Cash App, Venmo, all at Zero Dark Tony. And I thank you from the pineapple to the big apple from Maine to Spain, from my kitchen to yours. See you on the next one. Thank you for joining me.